And above all, we must not cede the moon to the People's Republic of China. Mr. Speaker, it is absolutely vital that we not cut funding for Artemis at this crucial stage. Mr. Administrator, Mr. Administrator, I have a question for you. The representative from Alabama has the floor. Mr. Administrator, would you be so kind as to tell this august body, when does NASA plan to have boots on the moon, given the fact that three years have now passed since Artemis II, and two years have passed since NASA's original projected date of putting humans back on the moon for the first time in more than half a century? When, Mr. Administrator? As I have clearly stated a number of times in the past, there is reason to be optimistic at this point. SpaceX now has Lunar Starship to a point to where low Earth orbit refueling is becoming practical. This is an enormous step forward in our exploration of the solar... I am a simple man, Mr. Administrator, as are many of my constituents, so let me be certain that I understand where you're coming from. So you are telling me, after three years having passed since you have orbited the moon, the vehicle that's supposed to be landing human beings on the moon has almost gotten to the point to where you can put gas in the tank. Sir, I think we both know that that's a gross oversimplification. If SpaceX had been allowed to return to flight before 2024, we would be much further along by Do now. Do you mean to tell me, Mr. Administrator, that the FAA should have swept the events of April 20th, 2023 under the rug? The fact that toxic dust was spread over a six-mile radius over two American it was hardly toxic, sir. And furthermore, do you expect the American people to believe that it was a wise decision to put the future of our exploration of the moon in the hands of a single company that was relying on a new rocket system twice as powerful as the one that you were using to send astronauts to lunar orbit? A rocket system that required a refueling network that had yet to be developed or even tested. All of these things you expected to happen by 2025. Obviously, sir, we were taking significant risks by going with only a single solution for HLS, but Congress left us with no choice, sir. Our funding was meager to say the least, and we had to go with the least expensive solution, and also the solution that involved the greatest complexity, the most unknowns, and the greatest capacity for danger, especially to the American public. I tell you, sir, and I tell all of my fellow Americans that this is the wrong stuff. And I am most grateful that we did not allow this rocket to attempt to take flight in the great sovereign state of Alabama, where we know how to build rockets. Yeah. $30 billion rockets. What was that? Uh, nothing. Good morning and welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I hope everybody appreciates my humor and also keeps in mind that I am in no way trying to stereotype any particular state, any particular group of people as being less than open-minded or unwilling to support NASA, that sort of thing. Instead, I was kind of doing a caricature of Senator Shelby of Alabama, who has always been notoriously opposed to fuel depots 
shows or anything else different than things that would bring jobs to his state, which of course is a state dedicated to the construction of SLS. And of course, he's no longer in office, so it's hard to say which politicians are going to have different opinions as all of this goes on. But That having been said, now that I'm about to leave Texas, I'm about to leave all of this behind, my entire experience here has left me concerned. Because when it comes right down to it, Starship was a success. The rocket was a success. But everything else associated with what happened at the pad is most probably going to delay the next flight of Starship until 2024. I really don't see how SpaceX is going to be able to convince the FAA and most importantly, the Fish and Wildlife Service that launching Starship again without taking extensive precautions is going to be a viable thing to do. There is going to be all kinds of opposition in this region, mostly from environmental groups and so on, who are going to oppose another launch. And I must say, at this point, they may have a bit of an argument because Starship did indeed spread debris, mostly dust, over a much larger area than was projected. And all of that being the case, there's probably going to need to be a much more in-depth analysis and a much deeper environmental study than was done for the previous launch. I really think that the honeymoon between SpaceX and the FAA may be over. I do believe that Starship will be successful eventually, and I think that it is the rocket of the future. But in terms of getting off the ground again here in Boca Chica in just a few months, I don't see that happening. It might be technically possible, but the government is simply not going to allow it given everything that happened here on April 20th, 2023. That being the case, we need to reset our expectations for Artemis, and that is bad news, because Artemis 2 will be ready to orbit the moon by 2024. Really, I think that there are many reasons why NASA could be ready as early as the end of this year. They won't because of an abundance of caution, but they could orbit the moon in 2023, let alone 2024, and at that point, NASA will be waiting for Starship. And if Starship is not allowed to take flight again until 2024, and if Starship only just gets to orbit in 2024, how much longer is it going to take before Starship can establish the necessary cadence of launches to make low Earth orbit refueling practical? And then after that, how long is it going to be before Starship attempts an unmanned landing on the moon? Will that landing be successful? And even if it is, how much longer will it be before Starship is ready to dock and rendezvous with Orion or the Lunar Gateway in lunar orbit and safely take astronauts to the surface. I think it's going to be a hell of a long time. I think 2028 is the earliest date that we should be looking at right now, and it could be even longer than that. And the question is, will Congress continue to support Artemis if there are no moon landings at all between 2024 and 2028? Well, there's a way to solve this problem, and I'm going to lay all of that out for you right now. All right, step one, it's time to dump Boca. Now, I'm not saying that we need to completely shut down everything that's going on at Boca Chica. The staff there have done a great job at manufacturing Starship, perfecting its design, and even carrying out some static fires, that sort of thing. I think that Boca Chica needs to stay operational as a testing facility, but not a flight facility. The region is simply too sensitive and too vulnerable. I mean, look at the protected area that exists just a few hundred meters away from the launch site. 
This is a protected wildlife refuge administered by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And lots of debris got into this protected area when Starship took off. There's going to have to be an extensive study, an extensive investigation carried out here by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service along with the FAA before Starship is going to be allowed to launch again. And many, many assurances are going to have to be made by SpaceX to guarantee that this sort of thing is not going to happen again, that debris and dust from a launch is not going to end up in this protected refuge as a result of normal flight operations. Now, of course, this was not a conventional launch, but not because the rocket malfunctioned. It was because the pad was so poorly designed. And what sort of changes are going to have to be made to the pad before the FAA is going to be satisfied? Are they going to be satisfied with an untested water-cooled metal plate as opposed to doing things the way NASA has always done them with a flame trench and flame diverter like they have at Cape Canaveral? Something that would take an extensive period of time to construct and would also require its own environmental study. And this is the first of just a number of hurdles that SpaceX is going to have to jump before they're going to be permitted to fly again from Boca Chica. The solution? Don't fly from Boca Chica. Instead, plan on the next flight to take place from Cape Canaveral. But of course, Cape Canaveral has its own challenges as well. Now that Starship has utterly destroyed its launch facility, is NASA going to want to take any chances with their own launch facilities at the Cape? Well, there's a way to prove that Starship will be safe as long as proper facilities exist. In other words, a flame trench and other precautions as is typical at Cape Canaveral. And how do you prove this? By testing the Starship core stage, that is to say Super Heavy and the Raptor 2 engines, at Stennis, where they have flame trenches and all the necessary precautions that one tends to have at a conventional NASA launch facility. And if the Stennis facilities are not suitable for a rocket as powerful as Starship, if the same facilities that they use for the SLS Green run can't handle it, then build facilities at Stennis that can. It will be a lot simpler and require a lot fewer FAA and efficient wildlife service hoops to jump through at this facility that was specifically set up for dangerous rocket testing as opposed to trying to continue to push things forward at Boca Chica that was never intended for something this powerful and this dangerous. Step three, Congress has already approved $10 billion for a second HLS alternative. That needs to be fast-tracked at this point. We need an alternative to Starship. It was always a very dangerous plan to go with a lunar lander that required an entirely new rocket system that also required an extensive number of low-Earth orbit refuelings just to get a couple of astronauts to the moon in the first place. A simple lunar lander deployed by existing rockets is something that always was much more straightforward. It just wasn't cheap enough for NASA at the time, but now that Congress has approved enough funding, this is something that should move forward as rapidly as possible. My preferred system is still the alpaca for a whole host of reasons, including the fact that Blue Origin tends to be pretty lousy at doing anything under a given deadline. And if you want to check out more details as to why Alpaca is such a good system, I have my tour of the Dynetics facilities linked at the end of this video. Very detailed, very extensive, a two-part series, and you should definitely check it out if you haven't done so already. But what else do we do? Because there are no solid alternatives to Lunar Starship in the foreseeable future. Dynetics and Blue Origin neither of them are likely to have anything ready before 2028, no matter how much funding they get. 
Well, the next solution is to find an alternative for Artemis 3. Instead of putting boots on the moon, deploy the lunar gateway with Artemis 3, get it operational, and then have astronauts practice working inside this new space station. Keep in mind that the whole objective of Artemis is to serve as a dress rehearsal for a mission to Mars. Moon to Mars is the entire focus of this project. You can accomplish a great deal of the objectives set out in the Artemis plan if you simply have astronauts operating in interplanetary space, which they will be doing on the Lunar Gateway in lunar orbit. They don't have to land on the moon in order to gain this kind of valuable experience and to gather the necessary data to simulate an interplanetary journey to Mars. So if Starship is indeed delayed, which it very likely will be, we can still be doing very practical and useful things in lunar orbit in preparation for going to Mars in the long run. And as you can see from this animation, which by the way was created after Lunar Starship was anointed as the sole HLS provider, NASA is not necessarily expecting that Lunar Starship is going to be the HLS provider of choice. They seem to be very prepared to use an alternative HLS system for delivering astronauts to the moon and then returning them to the gateway. Again, probably because they intend to use a different landing system for the sustainable Lunar Lander program, which includes, of course, Dynetics, Blue Origin, and a number of other companies. And it's also important to note that Artemis 4 cannot take place until the SLS Block 1B and also the Mobile Launch Tower 2 is ready to go. Who knows how long it's going to take for all of that to happen. So in the meantime, let's make Artemis 3 about the Lunar Gateway and Artemis 4 about returning human beings to the moon. This at least will give NASA something to do and some tangible progress being made while we're waiting on getting Starship into operation or for an alternative HLS system to be delivered by a competing company. This will keep Artemis alive. This is something that will allow us to continue on the path of returning to the moon without an operational HLS system being needed by 2025, 2026, or maybe even 2027. This will give space SpaceX the necessary breathing space that they need to get Starship into operation in a realistic time frame rather than taking any more unnecessary chances. Please like, please subscribe, also please hit those notification bells so you can be notified every time I release a new video as opposed to YouTube deciding what you should be notified about. And then also please check the description for various ways to support my content so I can keep bringing these details to you up close and personal. And as always, guys, stay angry about space.